Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to cover one game that was played between the two legends, Fisher and Tao. You will have your own ideas to the big question that many people ask. Who was better from the two, Fisher or Tao? The only way to answer this question is to look at the games on record. Fisher and Tao played only 13 games. The stats are quite fun in a way because they played five draws. Fisher won four games and Tao won four games. So however you may want to put it, the two are absolutely equal. If I dig into the games and results, I can offer you this. Tao won four games and all consecutively. Later on, Tao became extremely ill and lost four games to Fisher during the period of 1961 and 1970. Using these very basic statistics, with five draws and four wins each, no one is better than the other when it comes to playing each other. Of course, we may have our favourite, but we can't ignore the facts. I'm going to cover the second game, and this was played in Zagreb, Yugoslavia, back in 1959 and I may go on to cover other games in the near future. In them years, and when he came to Tal and Fisher himself, the openings they chose to go for were very predictable. If it wasn't the Spanish, the French or the King's Indian, one opening they did go for was the Sicilian. With this basic info in mind, we can kick off the game. Fisher White went for an E4 opening, and given the information we have, we knew Tal was either going to open up with the Spanish or the Sicilian. He decided to go for the Sicilian, which is one of the most dynamic openings for black, because it opens up all sorts of prospects. Through knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight recaptures, and knight f6, after knight c3, Tal went for the most popular choice of opening for black a6, the one and only knight of. The knight of accomplishes to stop any invasion on b5 and keeps white at bay. Fisher went for the sozin attack, a move characterized by getting the bishop in on c4, a move that is extremely aggressive. And before I forget, this bishop to c4 move is also known as the Fisher sozin attack of the knight of. And you don't need an explanation where we got this name from. Bishop c4 can easily invite an attack on the bishop through an equally aggressive counter move by bringing in the pawn on b5, a move that normally forces the bishop back to b3. The most normal response to this bishop c4 move is to simply close up on e6, and this is what Tao went for in the first place. Fisher moved on by getting his bishop out of any b5 attack, and let's call this move one of a prophylactic nature. Tao in turn got the bishop out and was ready for short castles. Fisher launched the pawn to f4, a move that prevents black from coming into e5. In fact, this move doesn't stop e5, because if black wants to go for it, he can without being necessarily worse off. The move to f4 will become apparent very soon, in case you're wondering why Fisher went for this move in the first place. After castles, here we have the reason for that f4 move, queen f3, and what does this move do? Let's see. After queen c7 and now castles, black ideally wants to attack on the queen side by shooting off his pawn to b5 and later on developing this bishop on the diagonal. And this is exactly what Tao went for. He got off with b5, but Fisher was not interested in what Tao had to say on the queen side. Fisher went for the real business and started to create an attack on the king side and did this with f5. Our first big question is to ask whether it is worth taking the pawn on f5. If black does, white can come in with some forcing moves, namely knight d5, and once the exchange takes place, the bishop on d5 now threatens the rook in the corner. Black can either defend the rook by getting the bishop in on b7, and here is where the queen move to c7 makes perfect sense. But if we come back to this move, does black have anything better to go for instead in two 
one and pause. I think so, but we can try it out just in case. Bishop f6, if you take the rook, a rook is a rook, but with a knight coming off with a check, bishop e3 to block the check will bring about the same bishop to capture on b2, and what now? Rook b1 will get the bishop in on e5, and if you now take on f5, after knight d7, bishop back to d5, and rook e8, is his position equal? I think it is, because though black is missing a rook, he has plenty of compensation. I'm not sure if I run this by any engine, it will show me an evil of any significant value. If we now return to this position, and as the game progressed, after Fischer went for f5, Tau attacked the knight on c3, and allow me to explain the queen to f3 move from earlier. With the threat on the knight, and with the knight being ejected to a4, if the queen was not an f3, the knight would easily have come in, and once this e4 pawn is taken, white will lose the battle for the centre. The attack on the knight by Tau did not stop here. Once the knight got on a4, Tau intensified the attack, and now launched at this d4 knight through e5, sending the knight to the only legal safe square he could find, e2. And just look how from a very decent position, Fischer is beginning to find himself in trouble. Tal got the bishop on b7, attacking the e-pawn, and as a result, Fischer had to get the knight on g3, which is the only move that saves the pawn on e4. Tal developed his knight to d7, and though he could have placed the knight on c6, which looks like a more natural move, he reserved the c6 square for another piece. Fischer blocked all the check avenues to the king by getting the bishop in on e3, and with now the bishop coming in on c6, Fischer moved for the second time his bishop, and this time on f2. So what did Fischer see here, which others may have a slight difficulty seeing? The very bishop move to f2 is purely a defensive move. It prepares the rook for e1, just to defend his e4 pawn. And here we have it. After Tal got the queen in on b7, we did see the rook come in on e1, and the entire game was evolving around this e4 pawn. Tal, having gone for this e4 pawn, and Fischer defending him as much as he could, since everything he tried just did not work, he went for a slightly different variant. He came up with d5, a superb move. Fischer calculated his best options and just took the pawn on d5. I am not sure he had any other choice. With Tal to play, any ideas anyone on how to proceed here in 2, 1 and pause? The main dilemma is whether to take the pawn with the knight or the bishop. In fact, it makes a huge difference with what you take with. The correct move to take is with the knight and reserve the bishop, but did Tal go for this in the end? Yep, he had no problems finding this. With the knight sitting in on d5 and the bishop sitting on c6, Tal can do anything because there is a lethal discovery on the queen. Fischer blocked the discovery by getting his knight in on e4, but again, he has a problem. But can you see what this problem is? His last five moves have been all defensive, and this is the problem. Getting the knight on e4 does nothing. g5 is out of bounds, but so is d6. The only possible option is a chance to get the knight on c5. But what knight would this be? The a knight, the e knight, or even could Fischer be looking at getting his bishop on this square at some point in the game? Once Tal fired off the knight to a new outpost, the alarm bells start ringing. c4 was a desperate attempt to confuse Tal, but just look how precise Tal is. He came up with the best possible move in the game, and though it doesn't look like much, we shall see in a few moves how valuable this move was. Anyone? g6. Tal was not expecting Fischer to capture this pawn, but to his surprise he did. And how do you move on from here with the black pieces? Tal could have recaptured, but he didn't. He came up with f5, an outstanding top move. Fischer went for g7, and now Tal had to consider taking the pawn or moving his rook out to f7. 
Tao took the pawn and just allowed the queen to come in with a check. After the king was tugged in to the very corner, the knight came in on c5 and once the pieces were exchanged, the queen stepped out of any danger and on to c7. This queen c7 move does more than meets the eye. It allows the bishop to take the pawn on g2 and this move exposes the knight on c5. But let's stick to the game. Fischer came up with queen e3 to increase the pressure on the e-pawn. But did this bother Tal? Taking on g2 is perfectly okay. But once the queens come off, after rook g8, it spells disaster for white. Tal did consider all his options and just prevented the taking on his e-pawn by getting the rook into the picture. And what did Fischer come up with after the rook came in support of his e-pawn? Fischer could not shake the very strong knight on f4 and wanted him out of the picture at all costs. He sacked his rook by placing him on e2. With two additional pieces coming off, Tal was determined to finish off the game as soon as he could. He intensified the attack by removing the pawn on g2 and we know if Fischer retakes with a queen, his queen will drop when the rook comes in on g8. Fischer did nothing here and left the bishop sitting on g2. He came up with a terrible, terrible move and took the pawn on a6. As a result, Tal came in with a check and that knight on a6 was going to be history. Fischer must have had a really bad day because he could have come in with c5, a move that blocks the check and saves the knight at the same time. This move also opens up the bishop's path. Having missed this move, Fischer clipped the bishop on g2 and though the knight could have been eliminated, Tao didn't even bother. He firstly came in with a check on g8 and from here it doesn't really matter where you place the king. King f3 leaves you to move a check the queen on e4, to h prevent the once queen the king from locates to f4 6 with a check can you, spot you will get a check on f2 to be done here. and once the queen, queen slots b6 in to block the is check what you're looking for and now white has nowhere to go if you move the queen to h5 to prevent the queen from coming into h6 with a check you will get a check on f2 and once the queen slots in to block the check her removal with a check is also made in his game mode. Fischer did not move the king to f3 but to h3. But was is a better move than the alternative f3 one? It doesn't really matter because there is no coming back. Queen g7 was as good as it gets. Getting the bishop back to d1 stops the invasion on f4 but what this move does not stop is what Tal came up with. All he needed was to gain access to the h file and can do this using a few different ways. Queen h6 check is one way to do this because after queen h5, rook e6, bishop f3, queen takes and bishop recaptures, just forget the knight even exists on a6 because he's out of play. Rook h6 is much faster and more efficient. King h4 leads to a rook check on g4 and now with the king being pushed to h3, black can mate with rook takes bishop. <laughs> Coming back to this position, Tal didn't even need to stick his queen in on h6, but did go for the rook on e6, and Fischer here did not even bother to make another move and just resigned. A brilliant attack on one of the best chess players around at the time, and it had to take an equally brilliant player to come up with such a vicious attack. Having gone for the most solid defense black can come up with, the knight off has proved time and time again is an extremely sound response to neutralizing any attack white might come up with. Things began to go south for Fisher when he allowed the attack on his knight on move what? 11. And gradually with move after move, Tal forced Fisher into full defense. Much of the game rested on the e4 pawn. Once the pawn came off, the game got heated up and just look how, with every move, Tal takes down one of the greatest chess players of all time. The game has not been of an extremely high quality one, but it had its moments. Anyhow, I need to find my stop button, but I promise to bring up a far more exciting game. But until then, many thanks for taking part, 
and many 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 thanks for watching this was your chess puzzler